हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम यू ऑल टू एआई की पाठशाला एआई की पाठशाला आपकी अपनी पाठशाला है आप सभी को दीपावली की बहुत सारी शुभकामनाएं आपका जीवन मंगलमय हो लक्ष्मी गणेश आपके घर में विराज करें और आपके जितने भी दुख कष्ट हो सब दूर हो जाए इस दीपावली तो हम सब ने दीप जलाया दीपावली का और ये तो अभी सीजन चलता रहेगा तो चलिए इसी सारी शुभकामनाएं के साथ हम अब अपने ज्ञान की दिया भी जलाएं इस पाठ्यक्रम में सो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टार्टेड वी हैव डन फिफ्टीन सेशन इन ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड सीरीज ऑफ प्रोग्रामिंग एंड टूडे इज दिक्सटीन सेशन एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस मेथड ओवरलोडिंग ओवरलोडिंग एंड ऑपरेटर ओवरलोडिंग देर आफ्टर इफ द टाइम परमिट्स we will be discussing polymorphism so this is all so let me share you my screen first and uh, thereafter we will start doing our work so let me share you my screen oh no no this not this white board are you guys able to see my screen so this is uh, i have already created one uh, github repository for the today's session and i have cloned the repository hope you guys have done it now let me create one file and let's give the name of file at method method on the score over loading dot i p y n b so let's create the file and uh, select python environment i've selected fine so can you guys please uh, tell me is my audio and everything is clear to you are you is, am i audible properly or not is my screen visible to you or not please confirm me so yes. that i can do more fine so first of all first thing that i am going to discuss today is method overloading so theoretically if i will uh, say what is method overloading in python see uh python first of all if some of you is coming from some other programming background like let's say java so there the method override overriding is a uh, different and here in python python doesn't follow the traditional approach of method overloading so in python method overloading is a feature that allows a class to have multiple methods with the same name but with different parameters unlike some other programming languages just like i have talking about the python python doesn't support method overriding over sorry overloading in the traditional sense where you can define multiple methods with the same name in the same class with different parameters types or numbers however in Py python provides a flexible way to achieve similar functionality through default parameter values and variable length argument list so this was the theory and i am sure you guys have not got it so let's understand this with the help of program because it is very easy to understand this with the help of program so i am going to demonstrate to you one uh, this method overloading uh, with the help of program so let me write one program this is a very simple program so let's write this a uh, class and i am writing the name of this class as calculator let's the name of the let's let's name this class as calculator this is my class name now inside this class i am defining one method simple method i am defining i am defining one method called add inside this add one parameter that i am passing is self 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 and other two parameter other three parameter i want to i am passing one is a second parameter is my b is equal to 0 my second parameter is b is equal to 0 my third parameter is 
C is equal to zero. So these are the three parameters that I am defining inside my method or function you can call. My first parameter is A. Second parameter is B is equal to zero. Third parameter is C is equal to zero. Now, with this method, I am returning this value return A plus B plus C. So, everything is clear till here. There is nothing new in this. Now, I am going to create an instance of this class or you can say I am going to create an object of this class. So, let's say, so let's run this program first. This is a very simple program. Let's run this program. Now, I am going to create one object or instance of this class. So, let's create this object CALC. I am giving the name of this object. This is an object of the calculator class. Fine. So, my object has been created. Let's run it. My object has been created. Now, I got the object. Now, with the this object, I can call my method which is present in my calculator class. And what is my method? This name of my method is add. And let's call this method calcal dot add. And simply, I am passing even I want to print this thing, whatever be the result. So let's write print here. Print. Let's write print here. And inside this add method, when I am calling this method calc.add, I need to pass an argument a, b, and c. My b and c is my default argument, which I have given it here. I can overwrite this argument also. So let's understand I am passing. The first time I am passing one as my argument. If now I am going to run this code, I will get one. Why I am getting one? Because one, the first the one argument that I am passing, I am passing only one argument here whose value is one. Let me let me first uh, do this and then I will explain you. Let's do. Here I am passing 1 comma, let's say 2 and not run it, I am getting 3. Again, let's say pass, this time I am passing 1 comma, 2 comma, 3, fine. Now, let's run this, I am getting this 6. Now, let's try to understand this. Let me open my, yes, Ketan, hello, welcome. So, you are late a little bit, not an issue. So, see, see, what I am trying to explain you, when I am calling this method, I have created an object of this class and I am calling this add method. First time when I am calling this add method, inside this add, I need to pass an argument. Three argument I need to pass A, B, and C. But I am passing only one argument, one. So when I am passing one, uh, one argument, so A is taking the value, first argument is taking the value one. That means A is taking the value of one. And since I am not passing here the value of B and C, so the default value B is equal to zero or C is equal to zero that I have already given at the time of my method creation, at the time of writing this method, these B and C is taking this default value. And I am getting the result. Because three argument, I am passing only one argument, but the two argument value, it is taking the default value. B is Whatever default, I have given here B is equal to 0. C. If whatever default value I will pass here, that default value it will take. Fine. And I am getting the result 1 because why I am getting result because 1 plus 0 
plus 0 is equal to 1. Now, second time, I have called the same method with the help of this object. This time, I have passed two value, 1, comma 0. So, what is happening? A is taking the value of 1 because A is the first argument and B is taking the value of 2 because B, B is the second argument. Two value I have passed. So, A, A and B has taken its value, but C I have not given. So, C is still taking the default value of 0. C. C is still taking the default value of 0 and I am getting 1 plus 2 plus 0 is equal to 3 as my result. Now, here during the third when I have called this add method third time, this time I am passing 1, 2, 3. That means I am passing the value of A here. 1 is A, 2 is B and 3 is C. So, since I have given three arguments, so it is not taking the default value that I have given B is equal to 0 and C is equal to 0. In spite of this default value, it is taking the value that I am giving here. So, now I am getting the result 1 is plus 2 plus 3 and is equal to 6. So, I am getting 6 here. So, this is a very simple program that we have discussed here and there is uh, everything is clear in this program. There is no problem here. Now, let us understand. So, This, what is happening here, thing that I want to uh, make you understand is that this is called method overloading. What this method overloading says that it is method overloading allows a class to have multiple methods with the same name but with different parameters. Fine. So, this thing that we have discussed here, this is called the method overloading. There is nothing. Now, I am going to explain you one more code to make it much more clear to you. This time, in spite of uh, everything will be same here, I am taking this code only and I will be adding something, I will be making some changes in this code and let us say inside this code, what I am going to do, let us do in spite of uh, instead of this a comma b i am writing a variable length argument sign a r g s this is a variable length argument we have already studied this before so inside this variable length argument you can achieve the method overloading with the variable length argument also let's write some args and let us run this code. Let us run this code. Let us create the object of this class. Same thing. CALC. Let us create CALC is equal to calculator. I have created the object of this class. Same thing. So, let us run this. Now, after that, let us write print and I am going to do the same thing. Since I have written here variable length argument, so this time what I can do, I can give any number of arguments whatever I want. So, let us write add and first time let me give only one argument, one and let us run this, I am getting the result. Second time, let us write two argument one comma two and let us run the result I am getting 
let's run it i am getting third time let's write many number one two three four let's write this number of argument and let's run it i am getting the result can you go above line so what is happening here only i have written here inside this argument i have written a variable length argument so by writing the variable length argument we can pass any number of arguments whatever number of argument i wish i can pass it and it will give me the result it will give me the result accordingly so this is the two type of code that i have discussed here and this thing is called method overlay overloading this is what it means so you can remember this in this way let me write uh, one few lines here S simple lines to make you understand method overloading overloading loading is the is the ability 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 of a class to have multiple methods methods with the with the same name but different parameters different parameters parameters fine this is a simple definition of method overloading and let me write one more line this allows us to have to have different implementation implementations of the same method of the same method depending on the depending on the types types depending on the types and number of number of arguments arguments that are passed to it that are passed so this is what you need to remember method overloading is the ability of a class to have multiple methods with the same name but different parameters so what actually is happening here we are calling the method the name of the method is same but the parameter inside every every time the parameter is changing so i have if you will you will uh, fix some default parameter and if you will not pass that it will take the default parameter and execute the method accordingly if you will not fix it if you uh, use uh, variable length argument so in this case whatever number of argument you will give, uh, give it pass it the method will work accordingly but i am getting something different you must be doing something wrong so what you are doing why you are getting something different which in which cases because my case calculator uh, dot add uh, parenthesis takes from two to four positional argument but five was not given i don't know why typing error type error okay let me see first see this then i will look into it but different parameter this allows us to have different implementations of the same method depending on the type and number of arguments that are passed to it what it means so different implementation of the same method the method is same likewise in this case the method is same but this case i am giving whatever number of the argument what i am passing it the implementation is getting changed every time 
so here i am passing only one argument so the implementation is something like that it is taking b and c as a default argument what i have given at the time of method creation and here same thing here i am giving three arguments so it is taking the three arguments so method is same but the implementation is changing according to the number of arguments i am providing similarly in this case also in variable length argument method is same only the implementation is changing as per the number of arguments that i am passing the same thing i have written here this allows us to have different implementations of the same method depending on the type and number of arguments that are passed to it so this is all about method overriding not tell me sir but i am not getting what, it. what you are not getting have you done the this last thing? one the, uh, this thing yes are no, you no, right last uh, this no 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 last uh, this thing outcome uh, output this print cal dot add yeah <clears throat> So why you are what what you are getting? I am getting error. And what is the error? Uh, calculator dot add takes from two to four positional argument, but five was were not given. So are you writing this like this? Can you see my screen? Can you check, please? Are you putting yes, star before ARGS? Yes, yes. So in this case, you need to share your screen and I will look into it. This is the only way out. So let me stop sharing my screen and let me give you the permission to share uh, your screen. So let me give, okay. Not able. Okay, okay. Now you can try. So show me your code. Please. Uh, class calculator def self star args just some arcs fine print so you are not creating the object of this class how you will get the output mm -hmm. in the first you are not creating the object of this class where is your object of this class sir calc is the object of the previous class that you have uh, that you have created Mm. CALC is the object of your previous class. Where you have okay. created the object of this class? You have to first create the object. This is a new class that you are creating. So you have to create the object of this class. You are not creating the object. That's why. Mm -hmm. So create the object of this class. After the class creation, you have to create the object. So create object. Create, create object. Here? Yeah. Yes. After this, add one. Yes. Create object. CLC. Write the object name CLC is equal to calculator. Now run it. Is your code not running? Yes, thank you. Fine, thank you. So you can stop sharing your screen. So fine, let me share my screen. So, so fine. 
till here everything is fine so we have discussed method sorry operator uh, method over uh, loading and uh, now let's move to the next thing and this is called method uh, this is called operator overloading so what is operator overloading in python what it means to be so before discussing it the let me first tell you something then i will explain it to you So let's say if I will run, if I will write 1 plus 2. So what it means? It will give me 3. Now, if I will write anoop, this is a string and then I will write jha. Let's see. And I run this code so i am getting anubja so you can see here one here the plus operator here is performing the addition operation here and i am getting three but the same plus operator here is performing concatenation operation here here what it is doing concatenation concatenation so same operator plus operator at one point it is doing the addition and at other point it is doing the concatenation. So, what this method over uh, operator overloading says or method of uh, method operator overloading says it, it involves defining special methods in a class to specify how operators behave for objects of that class. So, there are some operators that is uh, already defined inside the python and we are going to uh, say we are going to uh, define our own operators which I want to work in some specific way. These space, so we have to specify how operators behave for that objects of that class. So, these special methods have in fact double underscores before and after the operator symbols like you must have seen underscore underscore add underscore like this uh, underscore underscore add let us say underscore underscore add underscore underscore these are some of the operators underscore underscore subtract or something like that there are a lot of other operators that is present inside the python fine so we are going to see operator overloading so let me make you this thing clear to you with the help of some theory let me explain you certain theory so i am going to write the theory here let me open my See, let's say I have a class. I have a let's say I have a class, and the name of my class is called point class. This is the name of my class. I am calling the my class name as my point class. Fine. So this is my point class and this is my own class this is my own class point class that i am going to build this is a class called point class fine now let's say i have a i have got two points let's say i have a i have defined my some point class i have written something inside it now let's say i have one point called uh, point let's say the name of this point is this is one comma two this is my first point and i let's give it a name p1 and my second point is p2 
let's keep the name p2 and this is my these are these two is a object basically this is this is my point class and this is an object of this point class p1 is my one object or instance of this point class and this is my another instance let's say 3 4 so what the thing is i re i need a point a third point which is sum of these two points sum of point 1 and point 2 but the definition of this sum is the point the third point that I require should be the addition of these two points 1 comma 3 and these two points 2 comma 4 fine. So, 1 plus 3 is 4 and 2 plus 4 is 6. So, this will be my third point. So, I want to add the point like that like this and let's say if what i want i want this point p3 which is p1 plus p2 but when i am doing this p1 plus p2 i want the first point uh, the first argument inside p1 get added to the second uh, first argument inside p2 and the second argument inside p1 get added to the second argument inside P2. I require that addition in that way. So, this is let us say this is my requirement. This is just for making you understand how this operator overloading is going to work. So, what happens is this will not happen automatically. We have to do something. We have to implement some functions in our point class. This is my point class and I have to implement some function inside my point class. That means we have to override some functions because see this method underscore underscore add a double d sorry underscore underscore let us write underscore underscore add underscore underscore this is a default method that is present in our uh, operator. Uh, so, I need to override this method. And I have to mention my own uh, implementation of how my how I want my addition operation inside this what I am writing here p3 is equal to p1 plus p2 that I have to define it inside my point class. Then and only I am going to implement it. Otherwise, this thing will not get possible. I suppose this is clear to you. So, now let us move to the programming part and let us understand this with the help of program. Then it will be get, it will become much more clearer to you. So, now let us create one class called point class. Class called point class. I am writing this class name as point class. Inside this point class, I am writing one init method. Init and let us give some value x comma y. Fine. Now, let us define this elf, uh, this variables self dot x instead of the x, I am writing this private variable. I am I am making this x private. So, this is all self dot underscore underscore x is equal to x and self dot underscore underscore y is equal to y. Let us say x is a private variable and y is also a private variable. Thereafter, I am writing one class and this class is a str class we can we have already discussed about the str method sorry uh, not class str method we have already discussed about the uh, str method 
in the previous session and we are going to we are overriding str function we can override str function so let me write here overriding str method str function or method function so how i can override this str function we can override this by writing my own thing that i wanted to say let's say i am writing here this point is at and thereafter let's write it like uh, this thing plus and then like let's write str fine so self dot underscore underscore y underscore y fine and uh, plus 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 and this thing and thereafter let's write this thing so i am going to return this i am overriding this str method and what i am doing right now let's let me check it out this point is at this thing fine this plus str self dot underscore underscore x then plus then this comma plus str then self dot underscore underscore y plus this thing then this thing fine now after that i am adding one next method called uh, let me add one method here and the name of this method is let's write def underscore underscore add underscore underscore so inside this method first thing that i want to write is self and the next one argument that i want to pass is point underscore object let's give it a name point underscore object is a j c t object so if i write like this and i want to return something return let's return point and then self dot underscore underscore x plus self dot underscore underscore y plus dot underscore underscore elf so let's turn this point self dot underscore underscore x plus point object point object dot underscore underscore x comma self dot underscore y plus point object underscore underscore y so i have written this add method now let's run this code after running this code let's create a point i am creating first object this point object point and let's give it the name of this point one comma two then create another object p2 is equal to let's create another point point three comma four three comma four and what i want i want p3 and my definition of p3 is p1 plus p2 now i want p 
I want to print P3. So let's print P3. Let's print P3. Now if I run this, I will get the exact same thing. This point is at 4 comma 6. So this 3 plus 1 get added 4 and 2 plus 4 is added and I am getting 6. So how this is happening? We can achieve similarly we can achieve other things also. So whatever thing this is called operator overloading. What actually I have done here? First, I have defined this in it inside the two variables I have defined. This is a private variable. And now we can access this variable from inside my class. So there is no problem in that. Now this str method we are writing and we want to override this method. So what I am writing here, this point is at plus str of self dot underscore underscore l x plus str of self dot underscore underscore y plus this thing. So this is returning me this thing and thereafter I am adding one method called add method and with the help of this add method inside this add method I am uh, I am writing one uh, variable point underscore object and this will return me this point how I want this point to be self dot underscore underscore x plus this will give me the value of x and thereafter point underscore object dot underscore underscore x comma self dot underscore underscore y plus point underscore object dot underscore underscore y. So, by using these to these methods, what I what I am doing here, I am writing P3 is equal to P1 plus P2 and now I am getting this thing. Similarly, we can achieve the method overriding in different way. As far as let us say if uh, I want to do the same thing, but uh, what I want, I want that uh, I want to check the two point which is a, uh, a, this is a which point is greater either the first point is greater p1 is greater or p2 is greater let us say I want to check is p2 less than p1 or p2 greater than p1 I want to check p2 less than p1 or let us say I want to check p2 greater than p1 greater than p1 this i want to check let's say so for this i have to write this uh, i have to over load some of my methods in a way so that it will give me the result in that way so let's i will uh, change my program in a in a little bit different way what i have written here so let let me copy this entire code let me copy this entire code and paste it here paste it here i am going to make some changes in this this code what changes i am going to make first thing that i want to do let's say uh, let's import one uh, let us import one module called math module. First import this module, then it starts with point object, then same thing, till here everything fine, str I am writing, this point is at this self dot underscore this fine, every, this is also fine, fine. This add method I am writing, so this thing is fine. Now, I have to write one more method inside it. Let us write the name of this method. Uh, underscore underscore lt underscore underscore self comma point object point object. 
Now, this method should return me this thing. What it should tell me? Math dot sqrt. I will explain you. Just let me write it here. Then I will explain you how it where it is coming from. So thereafter, what I, I need to write? Self dot self dot underscore underscore x uh, this thing two plus self dot underscore underscore y square is less than is less than math not this it should come like self dot at math dot sqrt then i have to take another point object and then dot underscore underscore x square point object this thing so what it is since i am comparing the two points let me first explain you this square root this is my square root so basically what i am doing I want to calculate the uh, distance between the two points. So, how you calculate the distance between the two points? So, I want to calculate the distance from the basically I am I want to calculate the math dot square root s q u r two fine. Then self dot underscore underscore x square. This is the x square plus self dot underscore underscore y square. This is the y square. So, it is calculating the distance of my point x comma y from origin, from origin. Now, this thing, what I am calculating? Square root, math dot square root. So, this is the math dot square root and point object. So, whatever be my another point object is there, its distance is also calculating from the origin its distance is also calculating from the origin. Then I am comparing which distance is greater. If, if this is true, I will get true. I will get true. Otherwise, I will get false. So, this is where it is coming. This whole thing is coming. This is basically x square. This is basically y square this is under root and this is this, this distance I am calculating from origin that is why it is um, x square plus y square and this is my first point this is my second point and calculating is my first point greater that means I am calculating is the distance from origin is 0 or not. So, this is all. So, now if you run this code. So, so there was a, just a little changes inside this code. So, I have ran this code. Now, same thing. Let us copy this entire code from here. Let us copy this entire code. Sorry, entire this thing from here and just paste it here. Same. I want to see here. But here, instead of this thing, P3, what I am going to write? Yes, print, print this. Fine. And let us write something called print p2 less than p1 let's p2 less than p1 if i do this that means what i am trying to ask him is this point p2 is less than p1 or not let's run it what i am getting i am getting false that means p2 is not less than p1 so, sorry P2 is less than P1. Let's write P1 here. P2 is less than P1. Fine. So this P2 is less than P1. If you will, uh, if I will simply change this sign, then let's say what happens. I am getting true. 
if I am doing P2 is greater than P1, yes, P2 is greater than P1. So, this is how the operator overloading works, in which there are a lot of operators inside this uh, our Python class. str is one operator, underscore, underscore, add, underscore, underscore is another operator, uh, subtract is another operator. So, we are going to overload overload this operator in a way I want. So now let's see what is then what is the uh, so you must be getting understand uh, must have understood the difference between these two. So let's understand the main difference between this. What is the difference between if some of you, you maybe get confused? What is the difference between method overloading and operator overloading? Difference between or I, let me write it method overloading overloading ding versus operator overloading operator overloading so what is the difference between method overloading and operator overloading so so in method overloading what you, we we are doing we define the multiple methods with the same name but different parameters within a class and we already discussed python doesn't support traditional method overloading based on the number of or types of parameters as in some other languages and method overloading in python is typically achieved th uh, through using default parameter value or variable length argument list that we have covered then what is this operator overloading operator overloading involves let me write here operator overloading overloading loading involves involves defining special methods special methods in a class in a class to specify to specify how specify how operators operators behave behave for objects of that class of that class these special methods these special methods have double underscore double underscores underscores before and after the operator symbol operator name or name so this and how this helps us so this operator of overloading this allows us to use standard operators standard operators with instances instances of our class in a way that makes sense for our specific specific applications or a specific classes so this is all about the operator uh, method overloading uh, operator overloading sorry so this is and you must have understood the difference between the method overloading and the operator overloading there is one more concept called polymorphism this is a very simple concept 
we already have uh, discussed a lot of already are uh, doing polymorphism but we didn't have understood how this polymorphism works how this polymorphism is actually so with the help of this method overloading and uh, uh, operator or overloading we will understand how polymorphism actually works so let's write this polymorphism going to some polymorphism So let me first write one program. Polymorphism and method overloading both are actually same. So whatever we have discussed here, this is whatever we have discussed in this program. So let me tell you, take you this program, whatever we have discussed in this program, this is actually achieve this, this method overloading is actually called also known as polymorphism same thing is called polymorphism here and here also there is no difference between method overloading and polymorphism so what polymorphism in python let me write something for you polymorphism polymorphism in python in python refers to the ability of a single of a single function comma operator 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 or method or method to operate operate on different types of data different types of data or objects or objects yes and python supports two types of polymorphism one is called static polymorphism static polymorphism polymorphism static polymorphism and second is called dynamic polymorphism dynamic polymorphism So, this what I have discussed here, not uh, static, not dynamic, dynamic polymorphism is also called runtime polymorphism. It is also called runtime polymorphism, runtime polymorphism, polymorphism. So, we have this, let me copy this in this code. So, this is a static polymorphism. This is an example of an static polymorphism. This is an example of a static polymorphism. Let's create an obs. Let's copy the object also. Same thing will happen here. So this thing print just copy it from here. See. Fine. Copy the same thing, but with two same thing, copy. 
let's write one comma two comma three and if i will run this i will get this output so this is one kind of polymorphism and let's another another type of polymorphism which i am going to discuss so this is exactly what i have written in the first program there is nothing new in it now let me write a dynamic or runtime polymorphism so let's write one program first with the help of program i'm going to explain you this let's write one class and the name of this class is animal class this is my animal class now inside this animal class i am i am going to write one method called and the name of my method is let's write make underscore sound this is the name of my method self i am passing here and let's write pass here i am not going to write anything inside this method so i am writing pass so i have made i have uh, written one class called animal class and written one method inside this now let's write another class called dog class this is my dog class and inside this dog class i am inheriting this animal class i am inheriting my animal class this is a case of inheritance we have already discussed as inheritance in a very uh, details in several lectures so this is an uh, dog class and i am inheriting my animal class inside my dog class and let's write a method with the same name same method make underscore sound and let's this time let's return return let's oof let me write it i am writing this let's return oof this dog class this method inside my dog class is returning me this oof fine now let's write another class one more class and this class the name of this class is cat class inside this cat class also i am inheriting the animal class and i am writing the same method make sound but this class this thing is returning me meow let's say so three classes i have made inside my dog class i am inheriting this animal class inside my cat class also i am inheriting this animal class now let's do one thing let's create an object of this class so let's create first object i am creating let's create a dog object of this dog class so i am creating this dog object dog as the object of this my dog class and thereafter i am creating object of my cat class so my object of dog and object of cat class has been created now i want to since my object is created now i want to see i want to uh, see what this when i have created the object i want to call the method inside my dog class and the method inside my cat class so dog dot make sound is my method so if i will call this method and let's print it also let's print it print it let's print it and let's print this thing also fine and if i run this let's see what happens so in this example what is the purpose of giving you this example in this example the make sound 
method, this make sound method, let me open my book. Fine. In this example, the make sound method is overridden in both dog and cat subclasses. This is my uh, parent class or this is my parent class and or base class you can say base class or super class super class and these are my subclass subclass this is my subclass so i am already let's instead of this pass if you write anything inside it I will also make that and make you understand that also. It won't make any difference. See what I am already inheriting my animal class inside my dog class and cat class. So this method should be available inside this. This method which is present in my animal class is already available in my dog class and cat class because I am inheriting it. I am inheriting animal class inside my dog class and cat class. But instead of that, when I am creating the object of this dog class and cat class, it is not using the uh, method, the name of the method is same. Here also the name of method is same. Here also the name of method is same. Here also the name of me the method is same. But it is using the method that is defined inside the dog class. But it is not using the method when I am calling this method, which is uh, present in, which it is inherited from the animal class. This is because make underscore sound method, make underscore sound method is overridden in both dog and cat subclasses, providing different implementation of the same method defined in the base class animal. So this class this method is already defined in my base class but here different implementation of the same method is occurring so this is all this is called polymorphism so wh what is the fun uh, benefit of polymorphism polymorphism simplifies the code and make it more flexible and reusable reusable And it allows us to use a common interface, methods, name or operator to interact with different types of objects, making the code more ab abstract and adaptable. So polymorphism concept is nothing but the concept of method overloading. You can call the method overloading as the polymorphism, synonyms of it. So, so we have covered polymorphism now. I suppose this is all for the today's session. I am not going to extend this session any further. So if you guys have any doubt, you can ask or we can. I am going to stop sharing my screen. Those of you who are watching my recorded session. So and if you have any doubts inside this, you can definitely ask the questions. You are always welcome to ask questions. So let me erase this and Let's push our code to GitHub as per our standard practices. Let me push my entire code to the GitHub. So let me write a message method overloading comma method operator overloading operator overloading reading comma polymorphism morphism it's right here only discuss fine so let's push it to github sync changes okay
so let me see is my code being pushed to the github or not so let's let me see it so yes my code has been pushed to github is that level what i have discussed today is available on github so this is all for today so let me stop sharing you my screen and uh, so guys not tomorrow i am going to start uh, because uh, i suppose in um, object oriented programming only uh, one concept is left and a few concepts that I have discussed in the basics of Python, I'm going to repeat in, in the object-oriented programming also. So anything will not change, only the approach because the classes and um, all those things that we have not uh, studied during the basic Python. So I'm going to uh, like exception handling, logging, all those things, I'm going to repeat again uh, in the object-oriented programming. So, but today, tomorrow, we are going to start a new topic called NumPy. So, maybe the next two, three sessions will be on the NumPy only. So, we will be going to discuss NumPy. And in between, I will take one or two more sessions on object-oriented programming. We are on at the end of the advanced Python also. And uh, uh, because of the request of few students, I'm going to start the NumPy tomorrow. Two, three sessions will be on the NumPy. Thereafter, we will see how we can move ahead. Fine. That's all. Let me stop here. Yeah.